for who is presenting. Um, welcome, everybody. And the project we are talking about is a project. Oh yeah, Roman, okay. Um, is a project uh, which um, is dealing with uh, early modern uh, material. Um, early modern material uh, means, in this case, the um, pre-modern um, uh, 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 parliament, one of many. It's the period diet of the Holy Roman Empire in 1576, um, which um, is uh, yeah, somehow um, not special uh, compared to others, but special enough in the long uh, range of, um, of uh, these diets. They happened since the, the late um, the end of the 15th century. And um, it was certainly an event um, uh, aggregating many people, not only from the empire, but also from all of Europe, because there were discussions about um, Polish politics um, as well, and certainly in the, this uh, continuous um, uh, political question how to deal with the military offensive by the Ottomans. And 1576, you can imagine that there was uh, certainly um, considerations about uh, reformation and, um, and a religious split in the Holy Roman Empire. A large meeting, 200 representatives uh, arranged around the emperor. Um, and the, one of the questions uh, driving us uh, in part of the um, research community is how much um, of this event is um, specific or how much is it uh, can you can connect it to, um, uh, to other parliamentary meetings. And this German citation here, we left yeah, somehow deliberately, um, is um, uh, pointing precisely to this. Uh, in theory, Modern pre-modern um, uh, parliaments um, uh, are different from the modern because they don't have the institutional role, the constitutional role. Um, they are um, uh, conceptualized um, from the emperor, so the the uh, sovereign the, is in the center of it, and the people meeting there are well somehow bound to him. Um, and uh, this constitutes their, their role, and they are not representatives. That's a crucial point. Anyway, there is a, a connection to modern parliaments um, that it's an event of deliberation, of talking, of uh, negoti negotiating. It's much less an event of deciding decisions um, uh, or in the sense of modern parliaments political debate, so having um, a, a public and um, forming, uh, representing the opinion of the pu uh, public, uh, much more much more on uh, uh, discussing, counseling and yeah, talking. So um, from this, uh, next slide please, yeah, Roman. The, the project um, is um, trying to deal with some, something which is um, has a longer history. We have um, editions of these kind of uh, 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 the documents of these events from um, the, the um, uh, well, yeah, long uh, period, long range. We have editions um, in the Holy Roman Empire, um, uh, a long-term activity at the uh, historical commission at the uh, in Munich. Um, the uh, proceedings from 5056 to 1662. There are, as an earlier series, um, uh, dealing with the late medieval uh, stuff, which is uh, in reality nothing very digital. It's just a uh, richly digitized edition with some additional features. So, uh, don't want to talk about those too much. Um, next slide. Um, the inserting this event um, means not only inserting it into this tradition of editions, but inserting it into the general culture of these early modern um, uh, parliaments. And we all know there is the long tradition in Great Britain. There is a tradition in Scotland. There is certainly the tradition in the Netherlands. There is a tradition in France in, um, uh, and in many other countries, there is a strong tradition in Poland, uh, where the, the same even had uh, some much more constitutional um, power than the, uh, the, uh, the other uh, of these parliaments. And some of them are even in the process of being edited, uh, edited um, their records. So what we're trying to do is not only 
proposing something for our edition, but proposing something which might be transferable to other um, um, pre-modern parliamentary meetings. Um, uh, next slide. Um, uh, we uh, means that um, the three of us are those sitting in front of the camera. There are at least two of the pro uh, project um, members sitting in the audience and uh, uh, now we have the task to find them. Have fun. Um, and um, it's the, which is somehow crucial to mention them because uh, without Gabriele and Eva, it wouldn't be, the, the event wouldn't have happened. Um, uh, this uh, edition, even particular, uh, uh, Gavi is really the driving force behind it, and we are just the front people sitting here. And um, partially because we are the um, digital people uh, in a cooperation. Um, between us and the uh, the, uh, the historic commission I talked about, um, and I said already, uh, this edition is something we try to uh, uh, consider as a pilot, and um, as a pilot in the sense of we had this digitized um, older printed editions, and now we want to demonstrate that um, it, it's feasible and sensible to do it digitally. Um, that uh, it's not we won't lose anything against the uh, other editions. In, uh, uh, um, in on the contrary, we think that we can enhance the edition by applying a concept conceptual model of um, um, these kind of events, um, which takes a, a scholarly position um, developed in the last years. Um, which is almost unrepresentable in printed edition, the sense that printed edition, as the reader can uh, realize them, and even not there. Um, but with the digital methods, we have possibilities to make it explicit and even researchable. And the crucial point is that coming from this idea that the negotiation, negotiation in itself is an uh, essential part of this event, uh, means that we cannot reduce ourselves to print official statements in the official process or reduce the event to some um, decisions made, which was is somehow the tendency of this existing editions. But we want to represent as much of this interaction between the participants as possible, because these interactions um, uh, form the uh, historical uh, event, which um, made uh, the, this, this uh, diet, these uh, meetings, these parliaments, um, to uh, political constitutional institutions, even without being it. Um, so the model, uh, the conceptual model we are building and the database we are building on this communication is crucial. Uh, that is a perfect um, way to give the, word, the floor to Roman, who will now try to explain a bit where this model comes into the data, into the edition, and how, uh, it, is, how it looks like. Yes, uh, thanks, Georg. Um, so basically, our, uh, projects, uh, our project rests on three main pillars. Uh, first of all, a set uh, of archival, uh, an archival documentation, which uh, with uh, relevant material and documents, which records relevant material and documents uh, for the study of the imperial diet. And these are essentially, is essentially metadata about 10,000 documents from 34 archives recorded in an ERD and TI compliant um, format. Uh, secondly, um, a full um, digital edition, uh, which is created from selected documents. Um, and uh, at its core are transcriptions and collations of about 4,000 pages um, of source material, again in TIXML. And both of these data sets are, let's, are merged into a triple store database um, on the basis of our project specific um, ontology, which focuses on communication in the historical sources. And uh, we will show um, later a bit more about this ontology and um, also about the sources and uh, Florian will show then later um, an example of what we actually understand uh, mean with communication in these sources. So next slide. Hop. Um, yeah, here is uh, here are th uh, three um, uh, representations of uh, these um, uh, uh, of these three pillars. 
For instance, the archival uh, documentation uh, is represented in here on our test server uh, as an archival description following a structure more or less uh, as it's also found in archival systems. Uh, the a digital edition or a document from the digital edition, so from the edited text, is represented as a transcription following uh, the same uh, academic, um, uh, the, the same uh, standards uh, as the uh, as the, the the print edition, basically. And uh, thirdly, the the database can, for instance, be queried uh, through the through the search. Um, so the communications are available through searches or through visualizations of the database content. To talk a little bit more about the workflow, how we actually get data into the database, uh, first we transcribe um, the documents into TI or we uh, record the documents in the archival documentation. We add um, uh, uh, references to our uh, ontology of pre-modern parliamentary uh, assembly communication, or PAPAC, uh, in the um, uh, in the ANA attribute of uh, TI ANA attribute. And this is then um, basically, or out of this uh, ANA attribute is then basically a data ingested into a triple store. Oh. And here is a visual representation of, uh, of our, um, a graphical representation of our conceptual model uh, of this pre-modern parliamentary assemblies communication. And it is based on the following assumptions. Communication is for us an uh, event that has a, a place, uh, a time, and uh, one or more subjects. Uh, communication is for uh, communication can be verbal, physical, uh, formal, or informal. A communication um, can be part of another communication or follow another communication. Uh, in a communication, people uh, communication has participants. Most of, the, of them might be political agents, um, individuals or groups. And we actually have a very broad understanding of group. Uh, for us, uh, uh, group is a, gen a very generic, um, includes um, formalized organizations as well as um, informal social uh, aggregations. Um, in the context of the Reichstag, Reichstag uh, Imperial Diet, it's also important to mention that um, participants of communication uh, can be mandated by political, a, political agents that are not actually present. Um, we, try, we tried to map um, part, a subset of this, um, um, of this uh, ontology uh, uh, to CDOC, uh, CRM. Um, and as you see, um, many of our, um, of our concepts can ma map actually very well with uh, CDOC classes. Um, event, uh, time, place, um, um, we have actor for communication partner, um, communication as an activity. Uh, we have one uh, particular um, uh, part that, uh, that troubled us a little bit where the connection was not so clear and so easily established between communication and uh, subject. Um, and we try to take this T tour via propositional um, uh, pro propositional object. So here a uh, very brief, uh, briefly the last slide before I pass on to my colleague Florian. Um, uh, we try to represent the the uh, or I, an example of how we could represent this in in, in RDF. And as you see, there's everything basically that you saw before on the slide is there as well. So communication consists of time, place, um, one or more subjects, communication partners, and in the second last line uh, below, you see also um, the reference to the actual source or representation of the source where uh, we get the information from. So without further ado, I pass on to Florian. Who I hope make it very short because we are already uh, five minutes over time. Well, uh, you. Thank you, Roman, and thank you, Thorsten. I, I, I'll try my best. I beg you to stop me if I do not um, be able to do it, but I try. I try very hard. Um, we uh, 
we uh, approach the example um, and in, in all of this, um, we refer um, to the paper of um, Gabriele Haug-Moritz um, about the pre-modern culture of counseling um, from an organizational theoretical perspective. So uh, organized associations um, emerge through repetition and the imperial diet itself uh, functioned again and again in a rule-based manner, but not on written, but on uh, unwritten rules um, by the repetition of previous uh, practices. And then uh, there is a text, a treatise um, from 1569 or 1577, um, where uh, the author uh, means to, to, to recognize um, such implicit rules and describes them as some kind of formal structure. Um, and uh, we will talk now about this formal structure. Please do the next slide, Roman. Thank you very much. Um, so we, there are some of uh, these communication acts described in the treatise. Um, I listed only three of them, uh, for example, calling, proposing, uh, rotating. Um, for each of these uh, communication acts, we have communication partners. Um, sometimes a place, sometimes a time, um, but not all of the situations which could occur on an imperial diet are described in um, the treatise. For example, uh, what the electors did, um, the electoral council, this is uh, described in the text, but not uh, the special negotiations, which are very, very important uh, for the imperial diet of 15. 76. Uh, please do the next slide um, where I listed. No. Uh, Florian, perhaps yeah. we could uh, stop there uh, because we still need some time uh, uh, for the discussion first. And I think I have also set a precedent uh, for the rest of the of the conference uh, so that everyone keeps his 10 minutes. Yes. Uh, that's, sorry, that's, I must be strict. That's yeah, fair enough and that's clear. Um, it was 15 minutes one day. So anyway, um, uh, Florian, do you have a last slide? Um, or to uh, to the conclusion. Um, I, to the conclusion. I've, yes, I, I I think I'll try to do it um, without the slide um, yes, only so verbally. Having, um, yeah. With uh, our mapping of communications, we can do uh, different things. Um, we can uh, distinguish between um, regular communications following the treaties uh, and uh, irregular communications, which also happens uh, in practice. Um, so we com can compare them. Uh, we can see that there are communications uh, reporting on other communications, following on other communications. Um, and we can also compare different sources which uh, describe the same communications or more or less the same. Um, that are some things uh, we can do with this uh, database and this model.